Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at um, movement and emphasis. So you want to have either printed out the note page or create your own version of it. If you need to do that now, go ahead and do that. Hit pause and then come back. Otherwise, we're going to jump right in. All right, first we're going to look at definitions of movement. Visual movement is used by artists to direct viewers' eye through their work, most often to a focal point or focal area, um, sometimes also known as the center of interest. This movement is directed along lines, edges, shapes, and colors. And you don't need to write this last part, the yellow part, but your eyes naturally follow these lines and edges that you see in drawings and painting, sculpture, architecture, and nature. So this is something you naturally do, and the artists use this, um, this natural thing that you do to help guide your eye to the, uh, the center of interest or a focal point or the most important part of the image. Definition of emphasis, used by artists to create an area of dominance or focus in their work. Emphasis also controls the sequence in which parts of the artwork are noticed. All right, so there's two types of visual emphasis. Number one, you can emphasize an element. And in this case, the element dominates the entire work. Like this image here, the element of line dominates the work, right? It's the one thing that we see um, in the image is this uh, repeated um, black lines. The second type of emphasis that you can do is creating an um, uh, emphasize in an area. And this is when one area is dominant over the others creating a focal point or focal area, right? So there's something that stands out that draws your attention and it keeps drawing your attention, right? And, and here we see this man with his arms raised. This area becomes the focal point or focal area. Focal point or focal area is the most important part of the work or the first part of the work to attract the attention of the viewer. Okay, so there are techniques to create emphasis. There are things that artists do and things that they can use to help create this uh, emphasis or this focal area or this focal point. Okay, the first thing you can do is use the rule of thirds, right? Using the rule of thirds ensures good placement of a focal point. So go ahead and write that down on the left box. On the right box, I want you to go ahead and draw this out. Right, so you're going to have two vertical lines that make three even columns. You're going to draw two horizontal lines that make three even rows. Now, the rule of thirds helps to create good placement of a focal point. So, where these lines intersect are good places. Now, why? Because your brain likes it. That's basically the only thing I can say. Your brain likes it, it feels most comfortable, and it makes more sense when you're placing your focal points in around those areas, okay? So here's an interesting picture, right? Big bad dude, sword, big horse, saving this girl. Um, notice where they are placed, right? They're placed near this intersection, right? So this is a great place for a focal point and they seem to be the most important part. Also, notice where the two women are sitting here, right? They seem to be the focus, right? The most important part. And if you notice where they're placed, they are near that bottom left intersection. So next, contrast. Placing an element that contrasts, which, is, which means is different, with the rest of the work. So here's a really simple example. Now I want you to draw a simple example like this in the box on the right. And again, write the definition on the left. Um, and you can see here this black box it's really stands out because of all the other boxes being gray. So it contrasts the other box. It stands out. And then also notice where this one is placed, right? It also has fallen the rule of thirds. How, where do we see that? Um, the circle here, right? The red circle contrasts all of the other circles. So it really stands out because it's this different it contrast. Image of these guys here. Right, the lit up figures stand out because they are contrasting the rest of the pain. They are brighter, they stand out, so we notice them. Okay, another way you can do it is isolation. Isolation is in when one object or a few objects are placed alone or apart from similar objects. This draws the attention 
to the isolated object, right? So you naturally are going to wonder, why is this triangle over here by itself? And because of that, it creates some emphasis because you are looking at that one, right? So this guy's all by himself. We look at him and think, why is he there? And he becomes our focal point, okay? Same here, famous painting. Christina's world, here she is all by herself, placed in the rule of thirds, right? She becomes the focal point. Uh, next, unusual. An object that looks out of the ordinary or is very different than other objects will draw attention and become the focal point, right? So I want you to draw a really simple version of this. I have a bunch of just basic squares, and then I put this star shape with a picture of my son when he was little in here because it's kind of weird and unusual, right? So it becomes the focal point because it doesn't make sense, okay? It's like contrast, but even more so because it's weird. It's different. It's unusual right? So in all this set of eyes, we have this one big red eye. You could say it, it is contrast, but it also is a little bit unusual as well. Here's an image here by Salvador Dali, right? We have this woman who seems to be slumped over, but if you notice, part of her body has been cut out. It's the same shape as this little side table here. And then that, that side table has a piece cut out, which is this shape of this here. Right, so this is very unusual. Notice where she is placed in the picture. She's following the rule of thirds. So unusual is weird stands out. And then the last one is convergence. When many elements in a work point to one area or object, that becomes the focal point. Right, this is the movement part. It also can be achieved with people looking in a certain direction. So we have all these lines leading your eye to the white circle, which becomes the focal point. So please draw this simple example in your box and then write the information on the, the left box, please. Another example of convergence, right? All these different elements, the shapes, the lines, the colors, all lead us to a focal point here in the upper right. All right, so we look at this image here and it has a lot of different ways that the artist has create emphasis. There are a lot of clues that point to this boxer who got knocked out of the ring, right? Number one, if you think about convergence, part of convergence are people looking at something. A lot of people are looking at this one guy. And you naturally, when you look at a picture where a lot of people are looking in a, in a certain direction, you're going to follow where they're looking to see what's going on. Right. We also have some lines pointed that way. We got some of the, uh, the uh, referee pointing that direction. You could even say a little bit of contrast because he's pretty bright compared to a lot of the background being dark. Definitely placed near that bottom left hand uh, uh, place for the rule of thirds. So a lot of clues going on there. Okay, that's it for that lecture. And make sure to uh, take a picture and turn that in, please.